to call the Village of Midlothian Board meeting for December 28, 2016 to order at 7 o'clock. Roll call. Trustee Jealous? Here. Trustee Ivan? Here. Trustee Tolley? Trustee Christ? Here. Trustee LaRue? Here. Trustee Moscow? Here. Mayor Ivan? Here. You have a quorum. Please stand for the pledge. And after the pledge, we will be standing for a moment of silence for our veterans. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask Officer Zachary Richard to come forward to be sworn in. If you have someone who you'd like to have in with you, um, it's my father. Please bring him up as well. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the, uh, the ordinances of the Village of Midlothian. And the ordinances of the Village of Midlothian. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the duties, the duties of probationary, a position of probationary police officer. The duties of the position of probationary police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. Congratulations, both of you. policy and it seemed to reflect the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police position and I think um, it's important that the village and the trustees know some of the arguments in favor of this policy change that just took place. Um, according to the Chicago Tribune, prosecutors in Cook County can still charge with a felony if they believe circumstances call for it. Um, incarceration for nonviolent offenders for nonviolent offenses is expensive for the state and for taxpayers and makes rehabilitation less likely for the offenders. Um, $1,000, although it seems like a drastic increase for 500 to charge with a felony, actually brings us to parity with our neighbors, where in Wisconsin the limit is $2,500. Michigan it's 1000 and Indiana it's $750. And Texas, which isn't a state known for being very liberal on law and order, is at $2,500 as well. Um, in addition, for our retailers here, um, a February study by the Pew Charitable Trust found that raising the felony threshold had no impact on property crime or larceny rates. So I just think in conclusion, um, the village and the trustees should know like all the facts for this policy before, I know the village doesn't really have a say in this, but for the discussion, I think it's important to know the facts on both sides, both pro and con. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? Okay. Kathy Caveney. Um, 
again, I'm going to keep bringing this up. I'm asking the board to reconsider the extent of the Loma for the downtown area for the floodplain for the property in the floodplain on the west side of Midlothian Creek. Um, you know, we discussed this the last couple of weeks. I under I have a better understanding and better explanation as to why the village should move forward or why the village board wants to move forward with uh, conducting a Loma on the commercial property in the downtown area. However, I still feel that the board is overreaching in doing a Loma on the residential property. Resident, res, the homeowners have the right to go out and get their own Loma and if they're successful in getting their properties removed, if, if the engineer feels that you know, he's gonna be very successful in getting the commercial property removed and the residential property removed, those residential property owners will then have the right to go back to FEMA and get a refund of their FEMA flood insurance premiums for possibly one to three years. And unless those residents plan on sharing that refund with the village, which I'm sure they're not going to, and I'm sure the village has no recourse in forcing them to do so, there's no reason why the village needs to spend taxpayer money on getting private residential property out of the floodplain when those residents can clearly do that on their own. So I'm asking the board again to please reconsider the Loma and eliminate the residential properties. Um, also want to ask, I don't see anything listed on here relative to discussion about uh, CRS or funding for CRS. So I'm asking the board <coughs> if they will please add a specific line item to the meeting agenda for next Wednesday to specifically discuss funding for CRS activities going forward. Um, my plan for 2017 is to start working with Superintendent De Simone on the activities under Section 300. Section 300 is refers to the PPL. Unfortunately, I don't remember exactly what that acronym stands for. Um, but basically, it has to do with public notification and education. So Billy and I had discussed this two weeks ago after the last board meeting, and I told him that um, th that's one section of the CR of the community rating system that I feel confident that I can kind of spearhead, start putting to get putting a plan in place. But I need cooperation and funding from the board in order to do so because we're still going to need the assistance of our village engineer. Okay. Also, you know. Billy D. Simone wasn't able to go. Alan had asked Billy if he could go to a specific class that FEMA offered for, for him to get the CFM certificate. The timing was bad due to some of the construction that was going on in town. And because we're short, the village is still short staffed, because we don't have full time inspectors, he couldn't just leave at a time when he was needed to do inspections on the construction so that <coughs> construction could keep moving forward and not have to stop for electrical inspections, you know, concrete inspections, whatever. So I'm asking the board to please consider hiring the <coughs> architect firm that they hired when the, um, before Billy was hired, the, um, the, the storage facility on the east side of the tracks was going up. And we didn't have anybody here in town that was qualified to review plans, to inspect plans, to do any of that work. So the village hired an architect, outside architect firm to do that. Yes, so I'm, Dan Morris architect. Right, I'm asking the village board to again consider hiring that firm to step in if, if in fact we're able to find a class for Billy to take and it's gonna take him out of town for a week. But during that week's time, we're gonna have critical inspections that are needed to be done hire the engineering firm, hire Robinson Engineering, or hire the architect firm to step into Billy shoes and to take care of that work while he's gone. We can't keep delaying things because the building department is short-staffed. You know, Billy only has two arms and two legs. He can only do so much. So if we need to still hire outside firm to take over so that he can go and do the, get his CFM, then that's what the village board needs to do. So I'm asking you to please consider that. But again, critical. We have to get CRS on the agenda every week, four times a month. We need to start moving on this. We need to start putting plans in place. We need to start putting some actions into place. So please put it on the agenda for next week. Please start thinking about where funding can come from. And also, please reconsider this LOMA and remove the residential piece out of it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
interesting question to ask Kathy. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that we should take the residential section out because that they have a chance to recoup their money? And your fear is that they're not going to share that with the village when most of these people who are in this situation have been in it for years, but yet being in this situation, they still supported every action that the village did, didn't look for money, didn't look for any support, didn't let the village down. And because of this, the village was kind of, in my wording, reciprocating by including them in this section <coughs> because of dollars and cents, you want to eliminate them from that loan? Well, the reason I'm asking them to eliminate from the Loma is because the Loma is costing $68,000. Okay. And some of that $68,000 can be allocated to the community rating system. We've been asking the village to allocate resources to get us going on the CRS for three and a half years, mm -hmm. and that request has gone ignored. If we can get some funding for CRS, the CRS will also benefit residents, residents who are in the floodplain and who aren't in the floodplain. But this is the first positive action that mm -hmm. the village has done mm -hmm. to help the homeowners who have suffered and gone through this for 30 or 40 years. Oh, and I understand that, but the, the problem with the Loma is that it doesn't cover every single resident that's in a floodplain in the whole entire village. Never does. It's only covering a certain section. At one at a time. Okay. One section at a time. But, but the people that it's covering are people who don't flood. Who aren't who aren't suffering any flooding? But I don't they're believe they're still paying flood insurance. They're still being subject to all the rules and regulations. I understand that, but this Loma is only going to cover certain residents in a certain section of town, whereas the community rating system covers each and every property in town. It covers everyone, every single I'm property. Not, but you're comparing apples to oranges or grapefruits, okay? Mm -hmm. And your priority one is bigger than the other. And I say they both deserve positive attention. Mm -hmm. And right now, to eliminate one to make another one mm -hmm. good is not a it's not a wash. I think that this CRS is mm -hmm. very important and I mm -hmm. think that it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. But I don't think at the expense of the woman. As a resident, for as many years as I've been here mm -hmm. and seen how long it took them to get off the mm -hmm. dime right. to do something about it. And I and I totally I totally get your point. But I feel like CRS is being given the the shove. I feel like CRS is getting put on the back burner because in of favor Loma. of Loma. Why do you feel that? We've been asking for funding. We've been asking for assistance. We've been asking to, for someone on the board to give the engineer permission to work with us on starting CRS for three and a half years. And it's gone ignored. Don, Don Hillary brought this up a couple months ago. At this time, I'm going to stop this conversation. Okay. okay. I appreciate both of you and your passion for both mm -hmm. situations, but not the place for it. Okay? okay. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the board? Yes. Good evening, Valerie Weiskirk. And yes, it is the last board meeting of the year. So um, I was thinking about how this is this entire last year, except for a few months, I was quite busy doing a lot of research, grabbing a lot of information, you know, making a lot of requests, saying I'd like to see this and I'd like to see that and I absorbed a lot of people saying you need to take a look at this or you need to consider that kind of thing. But it was those moments of happenstance that I felt to be the most appropriate for where I'm at this evening and what I wanted to put to the board. Because without Don here, you know, for example, the beginning of the year, a resident and I ended up going to Mayor Webb's office in Markham. There were some lawyers that were sitting there talking about the South Suburban Joint Action Water Agency. They didn't know who I was <laughs> kind of thing, but I was there and I heard it. So to have yesterday here at Village Hall, I'm sitting in Village Hall and you came out of your office and said you had a meeting at 10 o'clock and I'm going, okay, <laughs> you've got yours, got the other event going on. And it wasn't until somebody actually said as they were coming into that meeting that they said that they were here for the mayor's ball meeting. And I made the decision today that I was going to simply just ask you what exactly a mayor's ball meeting might mean is this like an event that is being planned and if so is it like a fundraising type event or what exactly would motivate a person who attended your meeting yesterday at 10 o'clock to call it a mayor's ball i don't have a clue i had a meeting with the auditor and the attorney for the bonds and the treasurer i have no idea that why they would have said that 
Well, one. It wasn't, it wasn't all three. The first two that were there, they said nothing. <laughs> it was the man who entered after. Kind of. I could take one now, and I'll take that too. <laughs> I'll take that too. So it was a bond but understand. And, it was a bond and that's why I choose to ask things. So it is one of those things. This is the last board meeting. That was the last question that I have, and I appreciate you answering it. And I'm looking forward to you know even more information getting out to the public from you guys, kind of thing, rather than just always me, kind of pouring stuff out. You guys can get some credit for that kind of positive thing too, kind of thing. So thank you. Thank you. Agenda. The consent agenda for this evening is includes the approval of the September 28, 2016 executive session minutes, the approval of the October 19, 2016 special minutes, uh, the October 19, 2016 executive session minutes, the November 9, 2016 board meeting, the November 16, 2016 special meeting. And I had a Scribner's error. It should be November 9th, 2016, executive session minutes, because we did not have any executive session on the 16th. Also would be the bill list, the approval of the November treasurer's report, and the approval of the department reports for November 2016 from the, the admin, building, fire, health, police, and public works. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, I have a question regarding the building department report. Um, if you turn to page nine, I believe it is. Building department permit type the fees report. If you go down to line 16, um, there is a fence permit pull for Melody and Ballfield 145 10 Harding. There is a charge of $105. If you turn to the next page, on line 22, same type permit fence, Howie Minus Field, 145 Hunter Holman, 1122, no fee attached. Um, I believe we should refund District 143 the $105. I don't think that they should have been charged because even though it's middle of the end, literally playing there, that's uh, school District 143 property. You see where I'm talking about? Line 16 on page 9. Fence, business name, and open ball field, address 14510 Hardy, mm -hmm. fee of $105. It's my understanding that we don't <coughs> charge other <coughs> entities for permits or... I don't know who actually paid that fee. Um, can I investigate it and if it is District 143, <coughs> can you it then? Yes, thank you. Okay. You are correct. We normally do not, other tax and bodies, we do not charge. Okay, with that, um, I'd be looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I got it. I got a second. Roll call. Uh, Trustee LaRue. Aye. Trustee Moscow. Aye. Trustee Gillis. Aye. Trustee Ivan. Aye. Trustee Christ. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, we'll move on to trustee business. Uh, trustee Christ. The only item I have this evening is I would like to make a motion to approve the hiring of part-time firefighter paramedic Shane Kravanek, who's gone through the appropriate uh, background check. Uh, correct, Chief? Yes. Can I have a motion for the part-time hire? I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Price? Aye. Trustee LaRue? Aye. Trustee Gillis? Aye. Trustee Ivan? Aye. Trustee Mosco? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. That's all you have this evening? That's all I have under the fire department. I actually just have a question under community development as I continue to work <coughs> on um, acquiring, potentially acquiring properties for the village. Um, 
and I'm still waiting for you to provide me with the package you provided to the county, which, um, as I referred to the November 16th special minute meeting, it says here that you have started the process. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, on more than one occasion for that package and those pins, um, because I actually would begin to like working on a project. Okay, I'll get it to you probably tomorrow. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Yes, sir. Trustee Ivan? Can I ask Trustee Grace, Grace a question? Yes. Have we um, had any luck with obtaining the titles for the nail salon or on the property? The abandonment process has been started. We have approved <coughs> the um, intergovernmental agreement. And I, uh, as I mentioned last week, a week ago Monday, I was at the, um, I represented um, Trustee Killey at the South Suburban Land Bank meeting. And Attorney Brent Denson was there. They ordered title. So they have started the, the next step after they order title is starting with all the notifications. They've got to notify everybody, like they did with the, with, like we had to do with the demolitions. So it, it's a process. Um, and again, it has to go to court if somebody shows up. Um, that concludes the abandonment process. But um, I think this is our best hope for, for potentially gaining control of those properties for redevelopment. So the process has started. Okay, thank you. Okay, Trustee yeah. Um, I just basically have one minor thing. The meeting that you had with um, Maggie and the lawyers about the 2014 audit, were you able to get a date from them on when they will be delivering? <coughs> we were told mid-January, signed, sealed, filed with the state. Mid-January? Mm -hmm. If, um, again, they don't deliver, do we have an action plan to move somehow to resolve that? I actually I actually talked to the bond attorney about this, and I said, if we do not get back <coughs> at that time, I would like to start proceedings to start, I don't know how you can sue an accountant or whatever we have to do to hold them, because the state has gotten involved, the controllers involved from the state level. It's just been... We, we sat for 45 minutes yesterday trying to come up with the exact wording for his audit for our opinions. And it's like, it's just ludicrous. And yeah. now they have to, because it's been dragging out again so long, they got to continue to review, because part of the audit's process, they got to continue to review minutes up to date and things like that, and reach back out to attorneys and get their legal opinions. But he guarantees us, and I saw an email from him today, so I was excited that he's actually doing something, so, and we are saying what they ask for, we give it to them immediately, so, yeah. Thank you. Okay? That'll be it. Trustee Gillis. Yes, Mayor, right thank you. Um, I will be uh, looking to get approval to um, pass ordinance 1951 to dispose of three police vehicles. These vehicles are a 2005 Crown Victoria, a 2007 Dodge Charger, and a 2011 uh, Crown Victoria. Um, they also, any police gear or equipment that's on it will be stripped prior to the sale. <coughs> so I would like to make a motion to dispose of these three vehicles. I have a motion. I will second. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Gillis? Aye. Trustee Christ? Aye. Trustee Ivan? Aye. Trustee LaRue? Aye. Trustee Moscow? Aye. Motion carried. A quick summary of the activity for the month of November for the police department. They responded to 2,137 calls. Uh, they had two DUI traffic arrests, two 22 uh, suspended or revoked license. They had 270 traffic citations, two ju juvenile arrests, five warrant arrests, they responded to um, 29 property damage accidents and 11 personal injury accidents um, during the month. They also uh, had two evictions for crime-free housing and had 24 hours of training, 16 canine training and eight smart training. Um, I also want to um, bring up, we have the fuel report, but it's not on the consent agenda. Um, I was looking just for some clarity, and I can ask uh, Superintendent Sperry about this afterward, because 
Uh, the present reading and total gallons don't add up if this is odometer readings or if this is pump readings. So I'll talk to you after that. And one other thing um, I wanted to remind the department heads is uh, I believe we're supposed to have a monthly mileage report. We have a policy, I believe, that we enacted a couple of years ago that it should be turned in on a monthly basis to mileage for village owned vehicles that anybody uses. So the uh, clerk could possibly check on the policy and, and get it to the department heads so that we abide by that. And so that is all I have. Thank you. Do you want to send that to our trustee or to everybody? Or how would you? Because we do a monthly report. I just, we never sent it. So I wasn't aware of it. But how do we want to direct that? I think it's if by that. sending it to the trustee with your monthly activity report. And policy, I think I offered most of it, was probably adopted two years ago. So I don't know why it wasn't sent, I don't know why it wasn't distributed to the department heads after it was approved. Well, I think it's everybody's fault because we should have, <coughs> each chairperson probably should have had knowledge of it to share with the superintendent. So now it's going to take care of so we're good shape. Trustee Lorenzo. I have nothing to say. Trustee Lorenzo is not here. He has nothing to say. Trustee Lorenzo. I have nothing to say. Department Chief Gottman. Yes, there are several things to try to go through quickly. Um, as Trustee uh, Gillis just mentioned, with the three uh, vehicles going, two new vehicles that we are in August are here. Uh, one's on the road already, and one should be this week. Um, Deputy Chief Delaney sent out an email today, I don't know if anyone's seen it, about the switch to Calcom. Uh, we we're at a meeting today and that should be at the very latest March 1st. We're hoping sooner, so there was a delay with Posen coming aboard, so that helped things up a little bit, but we're just about there. Um, if anybody noticed the poll that was destroyed today or uh, that's because we received new live scan equipment that was uh, from the county. So that will be installed hopefully next week. Uh, and then I'd just like to make a quick comment if, if it's okay, reference to the comment about the retail theft. Uh, we are proceeding and moving forward with that. Uh, at the South Suburban Chiefs meeting, there was one chief that was for the change. One of the biggest problems is our new state's attorney's been in office at the time of the change for 12 days. And she decided that she was going to dictate her law and policy instead of legislative. Uh, so that's a problem that we don't know what else she's going to continue, you know, change. As well as, <clears throat> there's a comment made, he made a comment on, about Wisconsin uh, retail theft being $2,500, but the state of Wisconsin only has five million residents, a population of five million. The state of Illinois has almost 13 million. So there is a di big difference there uh, that causes problem. Um, but one of the key factors to this whole policy is that we want to make it 10 convictions in order to get a felony approval. We don't get 10 convictions on anybody in Cook County. So it would be next to impossible to get an approval for retail theft. They continue to put people in boot camp, give them supervision, and all other things. And in agreement with all the chiefs that were staying firm and taking this to the media uh, to get help from them is based off of all these, you know, circumstances. And it's only going to hurt the small business. I wonder if we continue to let people go in there and steal from them and not receive any punishment. So that's just a couple things that I understand your concern, you know, what's your comments on that. But there are a lot of other circumstances behind this, and that's why we stand firm, as I sent the email to all of you about that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Chief, currently, or prior to this policy, it was three convictions, and they want to change it to ten. Is that correct? 
currently it's for us, well, it depends. That's why I said they make their own rules. It's one to three and three hundred dollars. So if I'm correct on that, one of my detectives is back one, there. One prior conviction. One prior conviction and three hundred, but now they want to make it ten. And that that's just ludicrous. I mean we will never get anybody put in jail and all that opens up is it's a can of worms because not only does it hurt the businessmen, but it opens it up for the drug users and everybody else. They're going to go continue to steal more for drugs. It's going to increase the rate of overdoses and deaths. It, and it's just, there's a repercussion that goes with all of it. I don't feel a lot of this to happen. So we are going to fight it tooth and nail. I was at the meeting last week, and a couple of state's attorneys were there. Uh, Head state attorney Kim Fox was not there, which wasn't a surprise to us. Um, but again, we are taking it to Springfield media, and uh, there'll be more to come with us. Chief Outlander? Uh, just a couple things. Just a reminder to all the residents uh, make sure you have working CO detectors in your house. Um, CO is deadly. It's just cold weather, it'll be running or heat, and furnaces a lot more. Um, you need that detection. It's colorless, odorless gas, and it will kill you. And the other thing is, is uh, for people with real Christmas trees, I know we get one more weekend until the years, but if they're starting to dry, get rid of them um, before they start a fire in a neighboring town or they um, generally got burned really bad in Furnace House Town. So just keep that in mind. If you got a real tree, make sure you dispose of it properly soon. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Superintendent Sperry? Uh, just one thing, um, just like the ask all the residents to sign up for code red uh, we had a water main break today on Kilbourne Avenue and in the two block area that we were shutting down only seven people were signed up so people need to get online and sign up for that code red so we can be aware of what's going on in town that's it thank you superintendent DeSimone uh, I report this evening mayor thank you engineer Nagel mayor I do not have a report tonight treasurer Britton <coughs> thank you um, under my business, I'd be looking for approval of Ordinance 1952. And once again, I had a Scrivener's error. I can't get my C, I can't get my C Park street <coughs> correct. This is to rezone the property on Clifton Park Avenue, not Central Park Avenue. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Mayor Nagel. Mayor Nagel. Mayor Nagel. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Gillis, aye. Trustee Moscow, aye. Trustee Ivan? Aye. Trustee Christ? Aye. Trustee LaRue? Aye. Motion carried. I'd be looking for a motion of uh, to approve Ordinance 1953 to rezone the property on Waverly Avenue. I'll make the motion. No second. Discussion? Roll call. Trustee Christ? Aye. Trustee Gillis? Aye. Trustee Ivan? Aye. Trustee LaRue? Aye. Trustee Master? Aye. Motion carried. I'd be looking for a motion to approve the abatement ordinance 1950 for the 2016 tax levy. I'll make the uh, motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Ivan? Aye. Trustee LaRue? Aye. Trustee Gillis? Aye. Trustee Price? Aye. Trustee Master? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, and as I said earlier, um, we did meet with the auditor on yesterday, and um, hopefully we'll be moving that quickly, and we'll get it by the middle of January like we were promised. Everybody heard the same thing, so we're going to keep the pressure on until we get it. Um, water tower color. Mm -hmm. I still need one. <coughs> Light blue with the white tower at this point. Blends in with the sky. Okay. Homeowners on the west side won't be looking at something really bright. I think we need to take that into consideration. Any wording I think should be on the Cicero side of the water tower. I've, I've driven around um, and seen probably 12 different ones throughout the suburbs here. And the majority of them have white base, white top, but some of them that have been around for a while 
I mean, Mary pointed out that mold and black just hits the bottom of the rim. Other villages have a change of color right under the name and white on top of that so that that mold doesn't stick out so much with the white color. So, I mean, the majority of them do have white. I mean, I, a lot of them don't have the top crazy colors because it sticks out more and it affects the view of uh, homes that have it in their backdrop. And I've seen that there's been a lot of comments I've heard from people that regarding that possibility. So. Okay, well how about if I had the um, Robinson draw us up a picture of a blue with white top and the writing and we'll discuss it next week. We'll go with that then. Can I ask a question, Mary? Yes. Where do you want the blue and the white to start? Can you imagine you got the stem coming up and the sphere starts rolling? Normally they have it cut down here because this is where all the mold is growing right here. Okay. So this would be white up here, this would be a light blue blend in the sky. Okay. Um, and the color of the letters, what would you like to go with that? It was Village of Lovey. We went that down. Color. <laughs> it's the color though. What, what I, would, I would probably stay with the blue to match the bottom. Or go with dark. Dark, dark or blue or, or red. Or red. Yeah. Oh, like dark. Dark. Did you have these, Jeff, had given us? Yes, I gave them to you also. Yeah, okay. And the font? Not so fancy on the end. Yeah, we don't want this fancy stuff. Maybe more. No, you can read it. No, you don't like this one? No. Read it. Oh, we definitely don't like that end. There's more fun than just these, so I think we can just go with the Give a five that's not too much. Okay. Yeah. Not pr pretty basic, I think, is what we're suggesting, yeah. correct? Okay. okay, and then we're not going to go with the village up or go with the Voltian. Because when you get too many words up there, it's hard to read the village up. So you got mid only. And then you're going to do um, just on the east face and the west face, mid North and south, it has like a minor word. <coughs> you want to go with anything there, American flags or anything else, you can put that in there if you want. There's a major sign and a minor sign. The major sign is 1927. I mean, a lot of communities, of course, has a big, and what is acorn. Um, Mokina has a big Indian. Uh, there's there's little things that you could put that may you know stick out. Let's just try to get this far along for right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> not, not too many choices. Anything other questions? There you go. I have nothing. Okay. Um, I would be looking at 7:37. I'd be looking for a motion to go to executive session to discuss the employment. Uh, of certain employees, uh, union negotiations. So we're we'll going to collective bargaining. Collective bargaining. There you go. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Price. Aye. Trustee Gillis. Aye. Trustee Ivins. Aye. Trustee Zaru. Aye. Trustee Master. Aye. There will be no other business after executive session.